ASMR video. And as you may have noticed, I got a haircut. Uh, actually did it myself. So hopefully it doesn't look too bad. Um, and today, I'm going to be talking about my relationship with social media. It's a bit of a different video. Uh, I don't have like a script or anything. I'm kind of just going to be semi-rambling, but I have some talking points. So if you do like this video, don't forget to hit the like button if you do want to see a part two of this or a part two of any other video or you have suggestions that I should do, then comment down below. And finally, don't forget to subscribe. We're on our way to 1,250 subscribers. So, um, I first, I want to say that I, I came on here today or I'm making this video because um, I feel like I wanted to switch up my content recently uh, and talk about something, talk about some issues or not issues, but kind of just something that's close to my heart. Not really, but something that I've been thinking about recently. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, social media, um, I started using social media back when I was probably about 12, 11 years old, uh, using Facebook when it was popping, um, back in like 2010 or something. Um, so yeah, uh, now I use Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, um, TikTok, I occasionally use Twitter, um, and I guess like YouTube, if you want to call that a social media, I don't, I don't, I think it's more of like a entertainment platform than social media, but whatever. So yeah, um, I think recently, uh, kind of as, um, the topic of the negative side effects of social media or the negative effects of it um as that topic kind of gets discussed more and more i kind of wanted to just come on here and talk about i guess like what i feel about it um i'm also someone who works in marketing um so i use social media uh in my job <clears throat> and i have in any job i've had almost um so I kind of have the professional and personal perspective uh, on the subject, and I thought I would talk about it in this video, because why not? I'm just going to adjust the camera slightly. There we go. Um, so yeah, so I started using Facebook when I was younger. Um, that was before, like, everyone was on social media all the time, though. That was much more, um, yeah, it wasn't everyone using it all the time. Um, and that was before kind of older, the older generation took over Facebook. Um, now it's kind of filled just with parents and, uh, grandparents, but that was kind of back when people that were a little younger were using it. Um, and yeah, I think as I grew older, um, obviously more people started owning smartphones and stuff, uh, like back when Facebook was big, when I was a kid, it was, uh, you know, a lot of people still had flip phones or those slide phones, um, with like real keyboards. And then everyone went to Blackberries and then, um, like full smartphones. Um, so yeah, um, I, after Facebook, I started getting into Snapchat and after that Instagram and then most recently TikTok, obviously it's fairly recent. I was into Vine for a while. Um, So yeah, I mean, I think it's very easy to sit here and criticize social media because of its addictive, well, there's a lot of reasons, but a lot of it has to do with um, self-esteem, uh, making, like, constantly thinking people have better lives than you, etc., etc. Um, but there's also a lot of benefits to social media, obviously, um, you know, especially in 2020. Without social media, I would have not been able to reach out to a lot of people I'd like to reach out to. Um, and yeah, it's kind of nice to stay in the loop uh, of what people are doing. So yeah, I just want to come on to here talk about my experience 
with the, with the social media. So, uh, I used Facebook fairly often, I guess. Um, I, like, posted about it. Uh, like, just, I posted stuff when I was a kid. I posted statuses. Um, no one really does that anymore. At least no one around my age does. Um, and, yeah, I think... Uh, I started getting into Snapchat when I was probably about, like, 14, 15. Um, and Snapchat is cool. Facebook now is a lot different to Facebook how it used to be. Where, uh, now it's so filled with people, like, advertising and sponsors, and it feels very cluttered. Um, there's a lot of brands paying to be on Facebook um, because there's a lot of people on Facebook. I mean, it's the biggest social network, so, yeah. Um, and then there's Snapchat, which is a, less of a social network, just because it's more about individual messaging, and you don't, like, put, I guess you can put stuff on your story and stuff, but it's not really, it doesn't have the same social aspect that, uh, Facebook or Instagram does. And then you have Instagram, obviously mainly photo-based content, um, and then Twitter is mainly text-based content. And then TikTok, which is video-based. <clears throat> so, I wanted to talk about why I think these things are getting critiqued now. Um, and I think I fall in a weird generation um, gap-wise. Um, I'm somewhere between the millennial and the Gen Z babies, or like when I was born. Um, and I don't think I fit into each category exactly because I definitely remember, I vaguely remember a time with like, like I remember a time before smartphones, but I don't really remember a time before the internet. Um, so it's weird. I think I have a bit of a unique perspective on everything. Um, and I see kids younger than me growing up that are already developing social media addictions. Um, and you know, I'm sure a lot of you probably, well, I'm not sure. I'm sure some of you probably don't think that's a real thing, but in my opinion, it very much is a real thing. Um, like you'll notice that you will impulsively go on your phone and check your notifications. Maybe it's not a social media addiction, but it's definitely some sort of technology addiction. A lot of people um, my age and around my age are kind of dealing with because these devices and social networks are designed for you to stay on them as long as possible. Um, that's why you can infinitely scroll on Facebook or Instagram um, that's why there's, like, news on Snapchat now. That's why TikTok infinitely scrolls and, um, will always give you new content. I mean, it's, they're very well designed. Um, and I think that is damaging to people who can't help it. And, obviously, social media is such a new thing that it's kind of hard to, um, yeah, it's kind of hard for people to understand that that can be a real addiction, I think. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of 10 to 18 year olds right now that have social media addictions. Um, and that can be super damaging. Um, not only because it's lowering your attention span, it's probably causing um, anxiety like that. You probably feel like you kind of always need to be doing something, and if you're away from your phone, then you're going to have that anxiety. Um, but also, you know, especially on sites like on, on apps or sites or whatever, social platforms like Instagram, uh, where people are kind of portraying their best lives, um, it can be very damaging, I think. Um, especially to younger people, uh, to see kind of other people doing cooler things or succeeding or whatever more than you are, uh, even though their life may just be like yours and they're just showing the highlights of their life. Um, I think that can be <coughs> really damaging.
damaging to a developing brain. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely an issue, and I think it will become more spoken about um, as people that grew up with social media get older. Um, I think that social media does allow you to connect with more people, but I don't think that it... I, I think in-person connection is just a different thing. Um, and, you know, there's a reason there's less people, like, in relationships now than there was back, like, in whenever, in the 80s or whatever. And it's because everything is online now, and so many people are trying to, like, do online dating. Um, you know, this is a little crude, but people are having less sex than they've been having, like, people at the same age group have had less sex in the 2010s than they have any other century for, or any other decade for ages. Um, and it's because of the internet. Uh, well, I mean, that's one of the factors. And I think the thing that worries me is that, um, that kids are being blamed for their addictions when in reality it's, you know, um, app designers and consumer behavior psychologists that are developing these apps in a way that make them addictive. Um, so yeah, I don't think these social platforms promote anything inherently bad. Definitely not. Um, you know, they're not promoting kids to, I mean, unless you're following some weird accounts, they're not, I don't think they're promoting any negative values. A lot of the time you follow your friends and whatever, you're watching creators that you like and stuff like that. But I think they are promoting a very like instant gratification, like short attention span. I don't have time for things that aren't interesting culture. Um, which sucks because I think in life, and I'm fairly young, but I think it's pretty safe to say this, that you need to work long term to some things. Not everything can be accomplished in a day or in a week or in a month or in a year or in a decade even. You know, everything takes time. And I think uh, these social platforms just kind of don't encourage people to, you know, it's, it's just like in constant stimulation to the point where if you get off your phone and you're just sitting like by yourself, you'll be like bored. And I felt that I know at the beginning of lockdown, or I guess during the first lockdown, I got to the point where I was on my phone like 10 hours a day. Um, and I would try and spend time off of it and get so bored and be like, I need to look at something that I would just go back on it, even though there's nothing to look at. So um, yeah. And then obviously, you know, the more and more you do that, the longer that happens, then that's when the, you know, then that's when it can start like affecting your mental health. Um, whether that's affects your self-esteem or causes some sort of anxiety if you're not on the social platforms. So yeah, um, that's kind of what I've been seeing. Obviously as someone who's in marketing, um, the goal is to sell your product or your brand, um, and that's why I have never taken a job to sell a product that I don't believe in, um, and I'm not in sales because I don't have that gene. Uh, I don't have that sales gene. I can't sell, um, but I love like creating campaigns and like just kind of working on developing a brand. Um, and I kind of love like physically designing things and stuff like that. And I enjoy working in marketing because I, I enjoy marketing what I market. Um, I couldn't sell, you know, I couldn't sell a lot of things because I would just feel morally wrong, I think. Um, and I'm sure, you know, some of you disagree with me, whatever. So yeah, I think that it's just 
just something that comes up in my life a lot, just being the age I am, and then the field I work in. Um, I think a lot of people that are studying the effects of social media, people, whatever, middle-aged people, 30s, 40s, 50s, um, like psychologists studying that are interested to see how these people are going to grow up. Uh, and there's kind of a guesstimate that these people aren't going to have as many deep connections in their life, probably lack a sense of purpose, um, because they haven't been exploring that enough. And I think I was a little bit lucky because I think, because I didn't constantly grow up with social media, it was more when I became a teenager, I think I was able to spend a good amount of my early life offline where I wasn't overstimulated by content and whatever all the time. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worrying when I see a four-year-old with an iPad or something. I'm like, that is not going to be good uh, in, the, in the long term. Um, so yeah, I just kind of want to come on here. I've, you know, I've had a lot of conversations about this um, with friends, family, uh, people in my workplace. Uh, I did, I actually wrote a few papers on it when I was in university. Um, so I've done my research on the subject. I'm not claiming to be a psychological professional, but I kind of get the gist of what most of the research is saying. Um, and I guess kind of, I want to, I don't want to end the video on such a negative, pessimistic level. I, I do want to end it on a sense that I think it's important that we all um, monitor how much time we're spending on these devices. Um, because I think it's very easy to spend more time than you would like. Uh, and even if it's for work, you know, obviously we're all working on our laptops now or on our phones, so it makes it very easy to get distracted. So I just want everyone to be a little more aware and, you know, realize that, you know, it's, it, you will realize if you're probably someone my age that you will sometimes just go on social media even though you've had no notifications or anything, nothing's been happening and whatever. I've turned off, I've turned off all my social media notifications from my phone. Sometimes I put my phone in black and white because that actually makes, uh, tricks your brain into not receiving as much stimulation. So I'll do that quite often. Those are two tips I recommend. So, uh, black and white phone. Turn off your notifications for your social media. They'll constantly just be giving you notifications to get you back on the app. Um, three, anytime you need to focus, just literally delete them from your phone and then put them back on after whenever you want them again. And, you know, that I'm not saying social media is bad. I think it's a very powerful, powerful tool, which can be used in a very good way, but it can have very, very bad effects for people that get addicted to it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end that there. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. Let me know, um, let me know first of all what platforms you use and then kind of your experiences with maybe any sort of like feeling like you're addicted to something or like really disliking a platform because of something or maybe the reason you deleted an account on a platform. Let me know down in the comments. If you did like this video, don't forget to hit the like button if you do want to see a part two of this video, part two of any other video or you have any suggestions, <clears throat> then don't forget to comment down below. And finally, don't forget to subscribe. We are on our way to 1,250 subscribers. I will catch you guys next time. See ya.